Welcome to our coverage of NAB 2012. So here guys, I'm holding the uh, secret black box and this is a new monitor from Small HD and from what I've been told there's a lot of top secret uh, information in here, part of which could cost me my life, but uh, I'm going to see what Dale will be able to tell us. Um, Dale, what, what can you tell us about this monitor? I can tell you a few things about it. Um, it's the world's first 720p 7 inch OLED, right? So if you want 720p and fantastic contrast and color reproduction in, in a small size is the only option you have. It also comes in a 1,000-nit hybrid 720p option as well, which means you can go outside with it and be, you know, you, can have, you can't control your environment all the time, depending on how you shoot. Um, again, the only one of that flavor as well. And that's just the display, right? So we have two incredibly unique display options, both 720p, um, but at the same time, the hardware and the software inside are completely unique and innovative as well. Um, we've designed the platform from the ground up in-house to give us the maximum flexibility in terms of software features and functionality um, that uh, many of which are unprecedented and those are things I can't really talk about. What I can talk about is that it's going to have um, you know, all the scopes, waveform, vector scope, it has HDMI to SDI conversion. You can go HDMI in, you can send SDI and HDMI out at the same time. Um, you can actually vary the signal slightly and, and keep them independent. Um, it's got a built-in, back to the hardware, it's got a built-in screen protector that ships with it. That's, it's nice and flush with the front here superior impact protection, so it's protected from all six sides. Um, we've parked a Jeep on it. Um, it weighs a pound and it can support the weight of a, of a Jeep Wrangler sitting on top of it. Our coverage of NEB 2012 is brought to you by Kessler, innovative tools for filmmakers. Lettuce Direct. It's better with lettuce. LettuceDirect.com. Next light, get lit. Eight programmable function buttons on the front. And what it, what's unique about that uh, is that each one can be assigned many things. It's incredibly flexible in the way you can actually program these buttons. But in each cluster, there's actually a proximity sensor there. So if you have eight things assigned to eight different buttons, you want to know what those things are without actually having to turn it on and off. You can actually just, as your hand moves towards it, the monitor sees that and tells you, it prompts you what's assigned to those buttons before you actually get there. So it's all designed to increase the speed of workflow. Where we don't want people fiddling around with their monitor trying to figure out how it works and where things are while they're on the set and while they're shooting. Everything's very silent. All the buttons operate silently. It's got our same uh, innovative scroll wheel design, except now we have two scroll wheels, one on each side for ergonomics, you know, depending on if you're holding your camera with your right hand or your left hand, you know, you don't have to reach around at a funny angle. Um, you know, it's just got all, and all the all the ports are locking. We're using the high rows um, connectors for our for the you know the non the power and then the non-essential ports, the things that um, so every port on here locks basically. We even have a plate that adapts to the back that will uh, take gold mount and V mount battery plates. So you can mount Anton Bauer or IDX or V mount batteries um, to the back natively. Um, but you also run DTAP or whatever straight to it as well, of course. But the cool thing about that is that plate actually has a, a way to lock the HDMI connector in there as well. Right, so with that plate now, every single port locks. It's just, it's, it's, it's indestructible. And then also, can you just uh, power off of the same small HD batteries yep. as normal? Yep, yep. Um, so well, for, for some of our uh, viewers, tell us, um, what are the advantages of OLED technology? Sure. Sure, OLED technology is, I mean, it's still kind of a new thing. It's still trying to get its legs, you know, in, uh, in, in this market particularly. Um, but what OLED does is it gives you superior contrast and color reproduction, right? So the contrast ratio on this OLED panel is 10,000 to 1. Your standard contrast ratios in competing products, your normal LCD technology is more like 500 to 1, 800 to 1 at the most, sometimes 1,000 to 1, but this is 10,000 to 1. So what that does is your range of black to, to light is just so much more, you know. I can see what's in my shadows rather right, than exactly, worry about what's right. actually detailing getting along. Your shadows, detailing your highlights really comes out. So judging exposure on an OLED display is just going to be amazing. Um, as well as now, your color saturation is 100% of the NTSC color gamut, right? Um, most panels in this space are like 50%, 60%, right? So this goes all the way to 100. So reds are red, greens are green. Your secondaries, your magentas, your cyans, and all that are really, really. It, it kind of just it, it brings. These, this like this subtlety of the image that was always lost with traditional LCD technology back, 
um, you know, and it really shows you what your camera is seeing. You know, it's as sensitive as your sensor actually is, which for a long time it wasn't. Right, well, that's what I was going to say is like there's been this increase in sensor technology yep. and now we've got higher dynamic yep. range. We, we're, we need to protect and see right. what's in those exactly areas. Exactly right, dynamic range is huge, right? You know, the reds is up to 15 stops now and all this stuff. And, and you know, you want is that, that's the point of these monitors, right, is, it, is to really tell you uh, what what your camera's seeing. It's, it's really to, that, it's that connective window, that, that extra appendage between you and your camera. Um, and that's what we strive to do. We, we invest so heavily in finding the best LCD technology out there, integrating in in a sleek, versatile way, something that doesn't weigh six pounds and, and weigh you down, and something that just gets out of your way and allows you to do your job effectively. So when you get back to the studio, you know what you got, you know, it's no, no surprises. Right, I know, I know we're basically calling this a, a technology demonstration at this point, um, yeah. but at what point do you hope to kind of have this into a more fully realized product? Um, what we're expecting, uh, what we're saying here at the show is that we're coming out in fall of 2012 with it. Um, we're, we're trying to be generous with, uh, with our, our dates, you know, because we want to be absolutely sure we're going to hit them. So you can take that as, as my word, that it'll at least be fall of 2012. All right, so Dale just put his life on the line, guys. Uh, here he is. What's his phone number? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, look for this product in fall. And uh, anything else you want to add about the uh, the monitor line? Sure, yeah. Um, well, the, the one unique thing about the DB7 is, is this is now a completely 100% made in America product. Good for you guys. Yeah, thank you. Well, uh, I understand we're going to go talk to Wes about this HDMI locking yeah. cable. So, Dale, I appreciate it. Thank oh, you so much. Always. For Thanks a lot. Our coverage of NAB 2012 is brought to you by... Cinebate, tools for filmmakers and photographers. Della Luce, apparel for filmmakers. Zeiss, we make it visible. Okay, we're still here at the Small HD booth. Uh, we're talking to Wes, and we're talking about the other end of the monitoring solution, which is where the cable connects to the camera. That's right. And uh, why is this potentially problematic? What are you guys doing here? <laughs> I, everyone knows that the HDMI connector on Canon 5D, et cetera, sucks. So there are lots of solutions for helping lock that in or at least pr save the port protector. And we actually have a, a very inexpensive solution that does both. It locks it in and it protects your port. So this is called, I mean, we don't have a very fancy name, it's the 5D2 HDMI port protector. And um, it's just this piece of uh, plastic that basically hugs the side of the, the camera and you tighten it down with this thumb screw and it locks it on. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the, uh, the, the cable in. And this little guillotine mechanism comes in and just shuts it in. And you can see this piece of uh, plastic here really protects the, um, the the whole protector from being yanked too hard even during drop tests and we have a video loop going that kind of is showing that um, but you can see I can kind of pull on it from any direction you know so if you're tripping on it or whatever it's not going to pull out and I know that pros love locking connectors you know they don't want anything to come out so I can I can drop the camera and it it really really stays locked in so again it's the two kind of having those two functions of protecting the port and locking the cable in is really critical plus it's going to be inexpensive because it's plastic and um, and yeah and it, it's a uh, it's a pretty simple low profile uh, design because you know even if you aren't uh, filming video that day it kind of blends in with the camera we've kept the logos and stuff so you know you get you get you still get your uh, 5d branding in there um, and it, it doesn't become too obtrusive for a, a photographer. All right, so you can just leave it on there. Now, this is uh, this model is currently uh, you're you're just kind of demonstrating it. It's in beta right. testing, right? That's right. This is in beta test mode. There's a few changes we'd like to make, so we're kind of distributing yeah, yeah. a few models out to people to for them to test and let us know if it can be improved in any particular way before we go into mass production. Okay. Any idea of when you hope to maybe have something available for the public? Um, I'd like to sometime or in May. I think we can turn it around that fast as long as we get our feedback fast enough. And then this is also going to be um, um, product specific. In other words, this one will only Correct. be for the Mark II. Yeah. yeah, the Mark II is obviously a real popular camera for video, which is why you know we've kind of gone this way as kind of our first test run. Um, and so, if this is successful, and you know people prod us to go for another other models, then we'll kind of go that way. And where can people keep uh, track of you guys and follow the development of these products? They can go to smallhd.com and sign up for our newsletter, and we'll keep them up to date with uh, with all of our products, especially these from NAB. Awesome, Wes. Appreciate it. Thank you. Stay tuned for more coverage fresh from the floor.